She's becoming more like yours truly every day. The future frightens me. <laughs> hey, want to see pictures of baby Stephanie? What a question, of course. <laughs> hey, these snaps are in black and whitey. If this is some sort of artistic statement, well, frankly, I don't get it. No, it was an old roll of film. It was in an old camera that's owned by an old man. <laughs> looking teenage boy. The lab must have mixed up the pics. Michael, that means somewhere a monstrous looking family is passing around photos of our baby. Uh, wait a minute, uh, this teenage monster is me. Well, luck lucky for you, you, you grew into that face. George, are you saying this film's been in your camera over 40 years? Well, I've been wanting to finish it. Isn't this Jim and Chester standing next to you? Yeah. That's when we were in this gang, the Vermont Hooligans. Back then, I was called Pliers, Jim was Mustache, and Chester was Little Stinky. Why, why Little Stinky? You had to be there. <laughs> and you wouldn't have wanted to be. Flyers, this cat's curious. What sort of gang activities did you guys participate in? Uh, the usual. We soaked windows, threw snowballs against the sides of buildings. Of course, uh, snowballs were more a seasonal thing. <laughs> you, uh, you hooligans make the gangs in West Side Story look like a bunch of dancers. Hey. You ever think of having a gang reunion? What a great idea. All this talking about the hooligans has made me realize how much I miss them. Well, it's not surprising, because when you're a jet, you're a jet all the way. <laughs> From your first cigarette to your last dying day. None of us hooligans ever smoke. Except for butts. May he rest in peace. <laughs> Mustache, little stinky. <laughs> what are you doing here, Mr. Rusnak? My uncle Butts was a hooligan. <laughs> May he rest in peace. Well, I'd like to go on record as saying I'm against having guests. Hooligans' meetings were never open to the public. That's because your mom's porch only had room for six. <laughs> Oh, now Dick's here. This must be the Vermont Two or the Maple Candy House and the Hooligan Reunion. I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm passing through. Oh, what does it matter? Just sit down. Let's get this show on the road. Well, I, I can't, I can't stay. I, um, uh, I have a, a, a life. <laughs> stay. You better do it, Dick. You don't want to tick off a little stinky. <laughs> Why don't, why don't you three hooligans uh, sit over here and reminisce about the days of yore while we sit over yonder? And hang on your every word, our mouths agape. <laughs> hey, remember that time we soaked Mrs. Gordon's windows? Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about when we threw that snowball at Ms. Quigley's house? <laughs> oh, you left out the day that we soaped old man Shapiro's windows and threw a snowball at his house. <laughs> What a lame gang. <laughs> hey, you ever think of starting up the old gang again? We'd join. Uh, we, we could call ourselves uh, the new hooligans. Yeah, the new monsters did it. <laughs> oh, you kids today with your dreams and your bell-bottom trousers. <laughs> 
Starting the gang up again would just make us look silly. Yeah. Unless Dick joined. <laughs> uh, what? Why, you'd lend credibility to the gang. Everybody knows how sensible you are. We'd be sensible by association. Uh, for, uh, forget it. Oh, gee. Oh, sure. Why put yourself out when you can just sit back and destroy people's dreams? <laughs> you single-handedly dealt a death blow to the hooligans. Even our arch rivals, the ruffians, were never able to do that. Okay, I'm a hooligan. Yeah, all, right. all those in favor of Dick being gang leader, say aye. 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 How did I get to be leader? Oh, you're the sensible one. Yeah, I used to be. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Uh, my, my first act as, as hooligan leader is to adjourn this meeting till next year. Dick, we know you're anxious to strut around town telling everyone you're a hooligan. But first, we have to assign new nicknames to all the new members. Uh, now, let's see. Since you're the brains, your nickname should be something like... Uh, brains? <laughs> Very apropos. <laughs> and since Mr. Rusnak works in a shoe store, he'll be... Laces. I'd rather be leather. <laughs> We're going with laces. It's less pornographic. <laughs> and since Michael spends way too much money on clothing, we'll call him Clothes Horse. Gangish, yet fashionable. <laughs> I'll trade you. Yeah, right, like I'd want to be called Laces. <laughs> I just want to compliment everyone uh, on how much we've accomplished today, but once again, the meeting is adjourned. Yeah, not so fast, brains. <laughs> we still have to order the jackets. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jackets. Okay, uh, hoods or not? Oh, we're hoods, all right. <laughs> Stay with the program, Flyers. <laughs> Do we want hoods on our jackets? Oh, all right. <laughs> right. Well, Vermont has gotten colder in recent years. Yeah. Hooligans aren't afraid of the cold. Some of us hooligans have poor circulation. <laughs> and when your head's warm, your body's warm. I don't agree. Now, what if on a snowy day you went out without pants, but wearing a hat? Are you saying it wouldn't be cold? <laughs> You're muddying the issue. We will be wearing pants. Hooligans have always worn pants. <laughs> the problem I have with hoods is that damn string. That Damn string is what prevents the hood from flapping in the breeze. But sometimes the string slips inside the hood and you can't pull it out. Just, just tie knots in the ends. That's my secret. Yeah, well, what oh, kind of knots right. are we talking about? Enough already! <laughs> we're going with hoods and that's that. Now, I adjourn this meeting till next year. No, you mean till next week. We still have to pick up the jackets. Fine, we meet next week and we adjourn till next year. Is that a year from today or a year from next week? <laughs> Who cares, players? <laughs> Think Brains is having a stroke. <laughs> some windows or throw some snowballs we're waiting for our gang jackets to arrive so there <laughs> Ooh, joanna they're getting jackets mm. what's next gang nightshirts <laughs> yeah this used to be a quiet town then the hooligans rode in and gave us something to laugh at <laughs> What's their problem? Oh, women always laughed at us hooligans. That's why none of us ever dated till we were well past 30. <laughs> they're here, they're here! Our jackets are here! Now, don't mob us. Remember, you're hooligans, not ruffians. Brains? Pliers? <laughs> Clothes hearts? Laces? Little stinky? Just throw it in the dryer for a week. It'll shrink. Oh, my. 
Does my jacket also say hula gals? <laughs> oh, Lordy, it does. Mine now, too. how'd that happen? This might explain things. Next to my order, George checked extra, extra large. And under gang name, he wrote hula gals. Darn if I know what I was thinking. <laughs> Why we left the ordering to pliers instead of clothes horse is beyond me. Well, there's only one thing to do, send back our jackets, <clears throat> disband the gang, and uh, live happily ever after. <laughs> or we change the name of our gang to Hula Gals. Now, hey, there's... Hey, it's great! Keep the jackets. What's the haps here? Dear, a brick through an opened window. <laughs> That's the ruffian's calling card. It's from the ruffians. <laughs> I'm embossed stationery. Well, the ruffian's leader owns a print shop. Fine work at reasonable prices. <laughs> Dear hooligans, we heard you're back together. You are cordially invited to attend a rumble at 2.15 this afternoon in the alley behind Miss Dana's Tap and Twirl. Wow, our first rumble. This will keep the gals from laughing at us hooligals. Right. Yeah, As gang secretary, I'm checking the will attend box. Yeah, this afternoon we rumble. Yeah. Rumble, 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 rumble. Oh, brains. <laughs> I washed your hula gal jacket. Shouldn't you be getting ready for your rumble? Not if I'm not going. Oh, come on, you'll disappoint your little hula gal pals. <laughs> Excuse me. All this masculinity in one room is making me swoon. One thing about being a hooligan, gal, you get to hear a lot of sarcasm. We went over to the alley and picked up all the broken glass and things. This way, there'll be no injuries. Yeah, you, you know, you wouldn't want to get hurt at a rumble. We even scraped up all the gum and hosed down the area. Boy, a person could eat off that asphalt. Laces did. I'm trying to get my nickname changed to Oinker. Michael, I made you lunch for the rumble. There's hot cocoa, a Twinkie, and a Flintstone vitamin. Now, don't go trading the ruffians for things their mommies put in their lunch boxes. <laughs> Do my eyes mislead me, or is my mirthful muffin getting laugh lines? <laughs> so, brains, ready to rumble? No, no, but you, you guys go and, and have a good time and tell the ruffians I say yo. Oh. <laughs> you make me sick. Could be all that alley food you're eating. Pretty soon that guy won't have any tires left. Hey. It's, it's a beautiful turkey from the ruffians. Now I feel bad about all those nasty things we said about them. Suppose now we have to cook them something. Here, brains. This is addressed to you. Did I mention you make me sick? I believe you did. Mm. Dear Brains, we knew you'd turkey out. You don't have the giblets to rumble. Sincerely, the ruffians. Gobbler must have sent this. 
His father owns that turkey farm over in Tyville. Delicious birds at reasonable prices. So, Brains, you, uh, turkeying out? Do you have giblets? I have giblets. I may not know what they are, but I'm sure I have them. Well, come on, let's go, hula gals. We've only got the alley until 2.30. Rumble, 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 rumble. Yeah, and I got a knife fight at the freight yard at 3. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like those ruffians are late. I bet they got cold giblets. You guys are more pitiful looking than I remember. And that's not saying much. <laughs> <laughs> well, since Brains is our leader now, He'll be the one responding to your barbs. Oh, so your brains, huh? What's this, your dad's jacket? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not my dad's jacket. My wife tried to shrink it. But it, uh... It didn't... Uh, it, didn't it didn't work. Good comeback, Brains. Very factual. Hey, that jacket say hula gals. Sounds like we're fighting a bunch of Hawaiian dancing girls. <laughs> oh, yeah? Another barb for you to respond to. Maybe there's something about Hawaii being the 50th state. <laughs> you guys are uh, kind of brave for a gang called Puffians. <laughs> Okay, okay, glass houses. It's Wrench's fault. He did the ordering. Wrench, what a silly name. You tell them, pliers. <laughs> hey, look, we didn't come here to gab. Or did we? I've never been to one of these. <laughs> we came to rumble. So let's rumble. Yeah. Rumble, 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 rumble. We're not gonna rumble. Gobble, gobble, <laughs> gobble. I'm not turking out. I just think that rumbling is, is stupid. Speaking of stupid, your name is Beauty? Well, I used to be quite a looker. <laughs> well, I was. Yeah, right. well, maybe Brains would rather be home writing one of his how-to books. You know, the ones with all those grammatical errors. Oh. <laughs> my, uh, my books don't, don't have uh, grammatical errors. It is important to gently hammer the towel racks into position. Oh. <laughs> you split an infinitive? Tell me it ain't so, Brains. The, the, the publisher rushed me on that book. Oh, I suppose it was your publisher's fault. You used a dangling participle, double negatives, and all around poor sentence That's structure. Right. You know, you, you got a lot of nerve criticizing the work that I devoted my life to. Did I just hear you end a sentence with a preposition? <laughs> how, how would you feel if I said that your father strangled the turkeys all wrong? Yeah. 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 And now, why, why get upset? So your book's garbage. Well, we'll just put it where it belongs. <laughs> That's it. We rumble! 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 rumble. rumble.
we'd do next. It was... <laughs> Jump and Jerome Robbins without a choreographer were pretty much dead in the water. <laughs> what, what did you do the, you know, the other times you rumbled? We never rumbled before. We never had a reason. Come to think of it, we don't have a reason now. Yes, we do. The, the Puffians insulted my, my books. No, that's your reason, not ours. <laughs> don't get us involved in your vendettas. Yeah, I think we should all go home and start thinking about next year's jacket. Yes. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Nobody's going home. After everything I've gone through, I'm entitled to a rumble. 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 Uh, how about if the two of us just arm wrestle? Would that make you a happy guy? <laughs> arm wrestling's good. Oh, oh right. Right. Come on. Hey, fellas, fellas, we just clean. Oh, okay, okay, come on, Brain. On three. Come on, one. Come on, come on, one. Think them on. down. Two. Get your head in it, Brain. Three. Come on, Brain. 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 Come on, Brain.
there really was a mile-long conga line going up and down our driveway. Half of Vermont rates, and, and, and we don't? Well, I didn't think you'd fit into our circle. But George would. Okay, okay, okay. You want to drop by tonight? <laughs> well, we hate putting you out like this. Maybe we should bring our own dinner. Oh, you're a dear. <laughs> but no red meat. Michael's trying to lay off. How about chicken Kiev? There's something quick and easy. <laughs> I'm Larry, this is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. We're here to return George's drill. Oh, thanks. Unfortunately, Daryl's root canal took a tad longer than expected. Well, here's your problem. You had the bit in upside down. <laughs> Miss Stephanie, thanks again for last night's elegant soiree. My brother so enjoyed tickling the ivories on your new spinet. I'm sure the only thing missing from the evening was us. I'm sorry, Dick. Maybe if you had some hidden talent, it would have warranted an invitation. Well, you know, I, I played the, the bongos a little. Could you fellas make it over again tonight? Right now, my dinner party sounds like death. Sure, okay. Thanks. Okay, Joanna, chicken Kia for eight. Better make that for nine. Sometimes Daryl likes to bring his imaginary friend Ronald to these affairs. Oh, wonderful. I'm always looking for an excuse to spend an entire day in a hot kitchen. <laughs> then this must be your lucky day. Say hey, one and all. Me and mine are off to the mall. C can't you, you just say hi? Not when this slap happy pappy is charged for charging. <laughs> The uh, spring infant wear line is in, and I want to scoop up a sack full of those baby Yves Saint Laurent stretchies. Michael, don't you think you're overindulging baby Stephanie just a tiny bit? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the morning chuckle, Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, Michael, we're having another party tonight. Dick and Joanna invited themselves over. Dolls of Ritaville. And again, they did give us our casa for nada. Seven-ish? Uh, the mall doesn't close till ten-ish. How about eleven-ish? Eleven-ish? Pretty late-ish. Oh, what the heck? I mean, doesn't, doesn't everyone eat dinner watching Carson? Ish? <laughs> well, it's nearly midnight. Can't, can't we eat? and insult our host and hostess? Our host hasn't even showed up yet, and our hostess is upstairs soaking in a, in a damn bubble bath. <laughs> okay, who wants another hit? Well, it's at the top, Bob. How I do savor the 66 Chateau Latour. A bit pricey, but ooh, that nutty bouquet. <laughs> Down so soon, Stephanie? You've only been soaking for an hour. Well, I knew I had guests waiting. <laughs> Joanna, I know you don't get out much, but is this how we dress for a dinner party? <laughs> See, Joanna, I told you, you should have worn a towel on your head. <laughs> Apparently, that jack-in-the-box has tickled my siblings' collective fancies. <laughs> suspense followed by an element of surprise. <laughs> the same device exploited by Hitchcock in his overly spoofed 1960 thriller Psycho. <clears throat> Sorry I'm so tardy. Mr. Markey's baby boutique had a midnight madness sale. Oh, Michael, you look exhausted. Well, why don't we do this party thing another time? <laughs> but the cover's all your work. Oh, don't think about that. We can do it all again tomorrow night, right, Joanna? You want us to leave? It's after midnight. Some of us have work in the morning. <laughs> oh, baby, you're so pretty. Yes, you are. Well, glad I had that late lunch at 9.30. <laughs>
We'll grab a burger at Jack in the Box. <laughs> Tomorrow night, what about seafood? Why the hell not? Careful, careful, Dick. You're, you're about to trip over baby's first cappuccino maker. <laughs> you know, Michael, if you keep buying the, the baby uh, all this stuff, she'll grow up to be a spoiled monster like, uh, uh, you know, some, uh, some character on a, on a TV show. Well, I happen to like characters on TV shows, except for that Mrs. Roper on Three's Company. I still can't look at a moo-moo without thinking of that horny woman. Well, since you completely missed my point, I'll, I'll be leaving. <laughs> what does Dr. Dick know? <laughs> Nothing wrong with spoiling your kid. Oh, is there? Baby is so pretty. Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, yes, I am. <laughs> Hi, baby Steph. <laughs> you look so pale. Have you been selling your blood again? My last pint. Oh, goody, where's my present? Here you go, princess. <laughs> a cashmere sweater, and it's so expensive. It's a good thing you're working five jobs and mommy's cleaning toilets at the all-new 2000 room. George Utley, Stratford Inn and Casino. Well, that still didn't cover the cost. I, I had to sell my spleen to buy you that one. That's okay, Daddy. Everybody has two spleens. Oh, everybody has two kidneys. Except me. <laughs> oh, that's right. You sold one of yours to buy me that beautiful graduation sweater. By the by, uh, well, where is that swell sweater I sent you from Sweden, sweetie? <laughs> well, let's see. It must be around here someplace. I really should start labeling these. Honey, remember how I vowed never to rest till you owned every cashmere sweater in the world? Of course, Daddy. You put it in writing. Well, this last one makes your collection complete and my job is done. Are you happy, sweetie? Oh, Daddy, I'm the happiest girl in the world. <laughs> of course, I'd be even happier if I had every shoe in the world. <laughs> oh, no. Aren't I Daddy's little girl? <laughs> Yes, honey, but Daddy's all out of blood. <laughs> then make some more. I'm not sure I can without a spleen. <laughs> I want pumps, slingbacks, penny loafers, sandals, no. boots, slippers, no. wedgies. No. Walking shoes, no. jogging shoes, no. shoes. No. I want low no. tops, no. 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 puppies. No. 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 No, no, no! Daddy's little girl. Daddy's little ghoul. <laughs> Local officials report sharp decline in mouse population. <laughs> On one hand, there are more cats in this town. On the other, there are fewer mice in this town. <laughs> there almost, uh, almost seems to be a connection. Hi. Just hi? Oh, Dick Doc, you were right. <laughs> Last night I dreamed a little dream, a little Steph, and... She grew up to be a pouty, albeit pretty, prima donna. She was like Evita, Leona, Imelda. Joanna. <laughs> maybe I don't get this list. <laughs> maybe, maybe not, George. Grant and I admire a healthy dose of selfishness as much as the next egocentric, but 
All this clothes horse he did was take, 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 take. And of course, all that you and Stephanie do is just take, take, take. You see the difference? Night and day. <laughs> My opinion might not mean much, seeing I'm a childless old bachelor with bum knees and a trunk full of broken dreams. Can we zip this along, G Geezer? <laughs> right. Maybe you shouldn't spoil baby Steph. But how else can I buy the affection of my post-fetal femme fatale? <laughs> you, you don't have to buy it. Just spend time with her. Take her, take her to the park. Park? You know, that, that thing across the street with, with grass and, and rocks. Grass? <laughs> rocks. <laughs> <clears throat> Think of um, a park as um, God's Mall. Sort of a green galleria. Go, man, go. Well, a, a park has uh, swings to play on and, um, and hills to climb. Hills. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> they're like uh, out-of-order escalators. <laughs> Screeching tires. This six-cylinder cerebellum just did a 180. From now on, we'll go barefoot in the park and find splendor in the grass and picnic under the yum-yum tree, but please don't eat the daisy. <laughs> the Poseidon Adventure. <laughs> Dick, did I just miss the point of another list? Yep. <laughs> the way I figure it, the rise in the cat population has something to do with the decline of the mouse population. My brothers scoff at your theory. They blame the decline in the mouse population on their wildly successful line of rodent skin coats and mufflers. <laughs> Elegant mouse, rat, and weasel skins. For the discriminating buyer who's tired of wearing feathers. <laughs> well, I know I'm pretty bored with my chicken hat. Well, I'm not waiting any longer. I'm going to serve dinner before my crab cakes burn. Is Michael here yet? Probably still out looking at trees. Trees? You mean like they have in those park things? Uh, actually, uh, Michael took little Steph to one of those park things, you know, to show her that the, the best things in life are free. Well, now, who would put a stupid idea like that in his head? <laughs> home again, home again. Jiggity jog. Sorry I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. Michael, you have shredded green stuff on your Gucci's. You have been to one of those park things. No more shopping sprees for our little shiksa. <laughs> ah, wilderness, the good earth, the lilies of the field. The guns of Navarone. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Have you forgotten our vow of materialism? But, Muffin, I had a dream. I I've been to the mountain. This is no time to quote Shakespeare. <laughs> Michael, read my perfectly lined lips. No more park things. Who knows what horrible effect it could have on our child? My mother used to take me to one of those park things all the time. <laughs> you see? <laughs> well, a lot you care about my spleen. <laughs> All right, let's eat. <laughs> well, well, you look at the time. Imagine how much fun one of these dinner parties would be if we actually ate dinner. I agree, Daryl. This is eerily reminiscent of our all-naked production of Edward Albee's Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? <laughs> Somebody's going to enjoy this damn meal. Mmm, <laughs> those crab cakes look delicious. Could my covers be correct? Is it wrong to nurture my niblet with nature? <laughs> More what? Oh, thank you. Yes, I'd love to. <laughs> well, maybe just half a glass. I don't want to get tipsy and start talking to myself, do I? No. <sighs> Hi, 
Hi, baby Steph. I'm home. <laughs> what have you done to our carriage house? Why, Papa, I've turned it into a soup kitchen for the unfortunates of this world. <laughs> oh, baby Steph, you're getting worse. First it was the Peace Corps, and, and then Vista, and then Greenpeace. <laughs> oh, yes. Remember the harpoon I took in my thigh from that <laughs> Japanese whaling ship? You're a gift from God, Blondie. No, you are, sir. Why are you doing this to yourself? Oh, Papa, I just want to make the world a better place. Then put on a designer dress and some eyeliner, please. <laughs> but, Papa, those are material possessions. I know the best things in life are free. Who taught you that claptrap? Why, you did when I was two months old and you took me to that park thing. <laughs> Damn that dick. I lied. Look, the best things in life cost lots and lots of money. Did you get the dozen cashmere sweaters I sent you from Scotland? My, yes. And I hope they're from naturally shedded goats, not ones that were sheared against their will. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, sure. Here. Look, here's two more. Oh, they're lovely. Oh, wait, you're... No, you... Oh, Ooh, very uptown. <laughs> but not so dressy, you can't wear it downtown. <laughs> Baby Steph, I order you to stop giving away your pretty things. Who needs expensive clothing? You do. Oh, Papa, virtue is its own reward. If you insist on disobeying, I'm just going to have to buy you more sweaters. I'll just give them away. Then I'll buy you shoes. I'll just give them away. Then I'll buy you hats. I'll just give them away. Then I'll buy you dresses. I'll just give them away. Then I'll buy you furs. Ew. <laughs> well, I meant fake furs. I'll just give them away. Oh, Papa, can't you get this through your head? I don't need possessions to make me happy. Still down, boys! Your sweaters! Your, your sweaters! These are petite two men are all medium. You're allowed. Oh, oh. These pastels are wrong for your skin tone. Oh. What's in the evening paper, George? Oh, the usual. War, politics, cats. <laughs> you know, maybe I'll get a cat. According to the paper, they're supposed to be, quote, soft and warm and furry. <laughs> well, George, if that's what you want, I'll give you one of Joanna's sweaters. <laughs> hmm. I'll have to think about it. Let's see. One will look good wrapped around my shoulders. The other has a V-neck. <laughs> there you are. And here I go. Uh, catch, catch the lights on your way out. Oh, hearken to my tale of woe. Good night. Good night. Dick, wait. Last night I had a nightmare on Baby Steph Street, part two. <laughs> I denied my bubble of her booty, and she grew up to be kind to mankind, man. <laughs> Kids of the future. Dick, she wasn't wearing makeup and she was an idealist. Oh my God, no. <laughs> but, uh, Michael, obviously you're gonna have to compromise. You know, don't don't deprive Stephanie of everything, but at the same time, don't, you know, don't don't give her too much. And take the chance she won't be gorgeous, Dickens? Forget it, Fenster. I'm spoiling my spawned one silly. <laughs> exactly what I do. I just have to convince my spousal spitfire to take me back. I got it. I'll, I'll just plead temporary insanity on the grounds that I've listened to you. <laughs> I'll just tell her I was stir-crazy, I was bananas, that this one flew over the cuckoo's nest. The blob. <laughs> Go to bed, George. <laughs> Night, Dick. Night, George. 